All right, welcome back to another episode. This week we're going to be building my RB engine for the drift car. So this is actually a 2530. Mm. I mean, tell your mum to subscribe and thanks for watching, I guess. Uh, although some of you might actually want me to build the engine. So, I mean, let's watch that. All right, and this is what Pez's life savings pretty much looks like. So we've got an RB30 short here, and we'll be putting an RB25 head on it. So this is with spool running gear, so all forged internals, I-beam rods, only the best, and it's all had the machine work done. Plus, as you can see, a whole host of parts, plus a heap of parts over the other side of the workshop we need to put in this. So let's quickly talk about those, and then we'll get after actually building this engine. So here's part of the parts we'll actually be putting in today. So you can see a whole host of parts here from PRP, Golbys, all the rest of it. So we will be converting this thing to twin overhead cam using the finest N1 oil pumps, billet gears, the list goes on. So let's get after it. We'll install the parts one by one and I'll show you guys what I'm actually doing to make hopefully six to eight-ish hundred horsepower. All right, so here we have our brand new N1 oil pump and unfortunately, that's not good enough for our needs, so we don't need that anymore. We certainly don't need these gears anymore. Yuck. Yucky. So we've got brand new billet gears, brand new steel backing plate, and we're going to fill this with... Well, we were going to fill it with Vaseline, but we don't have any. So the Vaseline was actually in front of me the whole time. It's not like we had to go to Woolworths and, well, two dudes going to Woolworths buying Vaseline's always an awkward time. So now we can actually pack the oil pump ready to put it on the engine. That was such a waste of time. And now we'll grab the right gear set. This is our billet gears from PRP, I think they were, or Golby's or somewhere. Oh, yeah, look at that. Now packed full of Vaseline grease, ready to pick up some tasty oil when it first fires, rather than running dry. Because no one likes a dry oil pump. Ask me how I know. All right, so what we're doing here, you'll notice, we're changing out the oil pump gears and the backing plate. So now we're fitting a brand new steel backing plate from PRP. The reason for that is because this plate will actually bow under high load. So high RPM, high oil pressure, you'll find this thing will actually bow and bleed off oil pressure. Now, we're looking for all oil pressure we can get, so we fitted the brand new plate with brand new bolts. We were in there anyway to change the gears out because we know the gears are junk, but also this is another failure point. So we're gonna get rid of that as well and hopefully another reason why this engine will live on for years. All right, so we're just gonna line up our oil pump here. Scooch him on somewhere there, boom. And, oh piece of candy. So that gets slipped on there. Then we're going to use this centering block. No, we're not. Don't worry about that. All right. Oil pump is now fitted to the 30 block and that's our first part actually fitted. So we'll go around, put some bolts in this and then move on to maybe the water pump. All right, so now we've got our cut ring head gasket. So this is a special style of head gasket that actually incorporates a sealing ring. What we've done now is we've just sprayed this down with Hylomar and left to dry. So this is like a special tacky spray. Um, I guess a lot of engine builders and stuff know about it. I've been using it for years and it's never let me down. So for whatever reason, use it. I have no idea what's in it. It's probably bee juice, but it works. So now we can put the head gasket on with ultimate confidence that this is gonna work and we're gonna have a great time. Mm. 
Now we're just going to strip the head slightly, just taking off all these cam plates. This is how it came back from the machine shop. And then we're going to put the head studs in the block, put the head on the block, and then we officially have a long block RB3025. Now, the tricky bit's timing. That's coming up. I'll show you guys how to do that and how to do it safely. There we go. So I like to put a little bit of grease on the studs now because it's obviously pretty easy to do. Once they're really deep in the head, it can be really annoying. And then you've just got to put a little bit of grease on the bottom side of the nut. So it's pretty simple to do now. It could be awful to do later. So I like to do it this way. You can also do it the other way where you put the studs through the head into the block and wind them in. But this is how I like to do it. Seems to work pretty easily. The head just kind of falls on and you know it's lined up pretty good. So this is how I do it. Just uh, word of advice, you don't have to do it this way, but works for me. Oh, it's all very quiet. Oh, stop it. Uh, we have a long lock. All right, and just like that, the head's on. So no hammers, no worries. All I did was wipe that grease on the studs. So hopefully the head doesn't drag it down as we put the head on and get any of that on our brand new gasket surface. So now we're gonna talk down the head to ARP specs. I don't actually know what they are off the top of my head. And then we're gonna put in the lifters. Then we're gonna put the cams in. Then we're gonna time this thing up. We're running out of parts. It's a good thing. It's a good thing. So. We'll keep going with this. Next step, head stud tension. All right, so we're just about to tighten the head down now. And to save you Googling, it actually comes with this in the box. So this is an instruction sheet on how to tighten down your head and how tight to do it. So we will be following this sequence here and three equal steps to 90 foot pounds. So all these people on Google who are like, I don't know how tight to do my head down. Follow the instructions that are in the box. Don't throw them out and actually read them because it's pretty helpful if you don't want to lift a head. So right now, we'll sequence this down in the sequence ARP provided, and we'll get on to building the rest of this engine. So part of the difficulty of doing a 2530 is the fact that the water gallery and the oil gallery don't necessarily match up with the 25 on top and the 30 on the bottom. So what you've got to do, you've actually got to block the head on the 25. How you do that? So you can use a little AN fitting and screw that in there and block it off, or like this one, you can have it welded up. However, that oil feed actually feeds the VCT. If you want to have variable cam timing, you have to do a conversion kit. So we have bought the conversion kit from Franklin, which is simply a little AN hose. And luckily enough, Tarks provide a lot, nice little fitting here. So you can go just from there to there. This is all behind the timing belt. It all fits in pretty easily. And honestly, it's a pretty slick little kit. Right now, we've just bled our lifters and we're gonna slip them in. So these are hydraulic lifters, unlike a GDR or a racing head that would have shim under bucket or anything else. These are just the old hydraulic jobbies. So we've soaked them. So hopefully all the airs come out of them. And yeah, we're just gonna slip them in, put the cams in now. <sighs> I think we're gonna call it a night maybe. Who knows? Come back tomorrow, finish it off. Let's go and straighten my basket. 
So we're just about to put our cams in and unfortunately the RB series, not like a JZ, is actually an interference engine. So if you put the cams in wrong and just rattle them down, well, your nice new valves might, need, might meet nice new pistons and then... So to avoid any of that, slip the timing cover on and just line them up with a cam gear. So these are just, they're done by pins. So all you need to do, line it up on the pin there, line it up with that one. So as you can see, our intake cam right now isn't actually lined up, so we'll spin it around. None of this is done up, it's all just sitting on top of the engine. So we'll scoot it around until it's lined up, or best part of lined up. And now you can confidently pull down all the cam caps and know you're not gonna punch any valves. It's that easy. Oh, this is what it looks like when I'm double checking on Google if I got the timing marks right. I think I did, but... No, I got it right. Fuck, I'm good. All right, so I've just double checked online and my marks are actually correct. Um, this isn't quite the kit that I had in mind. So this is the dual tensioner mod they always talk about but we're actually gonna run an idler down here because this is the kit PRP cell with an idler and then just the stock tensioner up the top. Sometimes people down the bottom will run another tensioner here so you can back off the belt tension if it's too tight. We'll wind it around now. We're gonna double check our tension. You should be able to get a 90 with the belt or just about. So we can now, that means it's not actually that tight. So it could be okay. Obviously I trust PRP stuff equally. Gotta check your shit when you build it. So we're gonna rotate it around now for the first time ever and make sure it doesn't hit any valves. I went tight. Nah, I just struggled with it. <laughs> Didn't really. Imagine if it did though. I'd be so sad. Good news is the engine like hasn't cost me like a lot of money or anything. It's pretty cheap. It's like wreckers, like go down the wreckers, find yourself a RB. So now line it back up with the mark. Now we can check our belt tension on this side, on the tensioner side, because this side now is all nice and tight. We've wound it over, it's got correct load on it. We'll check this side. Yep. Looks like a belt. So this is probably gonna be the right setup for us. I'll actually dial this in. There's a little Allen key mark. I'll get this dialed in off camera because it could take me an hour just fiddling around. And then we'll get to the rest of the accessories, but I mean, we're kind of there. So we spent about an hour just buttoning up all the little stuff with the RB2530, so just the front cover, all of the brand new Franklin parts. Um, yeah, couldn't be more happy with how all this came together. So a big thank you to our channel partners. Absolutely no one. I paid full retail for this and it cost me a fortune. So if you're Ross or PRP or any of the other companies that I bought stuff from, congratulations, because you just got a happy customer, but it cost me an absolute arm and a leg. So I'd appreciate anyone at home, if you're still watching, smash that subscribe button because it helps us. Every single one gets closer to a thousand. We can actually start making some money off this. So massive thank you to everyone at home watching. Tell your mum to subscribe. I know she's been watching and we'll catch you on a future episode where we're probably putting this in a car or yeah, maybe building a Daihatsu or something.